Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah Some problems that we face as a community uh, in particular the Salafi community is that we have many individuals who claim Salafiyah and have claimed Salafiyah over the years and misrepresented the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah and the danger is already a clear and apparent from that because we've seen continual splitting amongst our communities we've seen our communities not produce much of anything except for more discord and disharmony and we've seen people who uh many more people either leave the dawah or people flee and run from the dawah and we've also seen a growth in Hezbiya and the traits of Hezbiya and people attacking the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah and attacking the scholars of Ahl Sunnah. And so what I wanted to highlight is a few points, it's really three points. And this is more highlighting the problem. And we'll try to. Uh, look at some of the solutions in accordance with the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and according to our scholars, the scholars of Ahl Sunnah Tiwa Jama'ah. One of the problems we have is the issue of taqlid, blind following. And we've had many individuals over the years, especially du'at, and even some scholars fallen into this problem in this dilemma uh, making the people follow a particular scholar or group of scholars and return all their affairs back to particular individuals when alhamd, we have many scholars of Ahl Sunnah Mojud, and we have many major scholars and often more often times than not you'll find that some individuals make the people and force the people to take from certain scholars who aren't on the level in the tabaqat as other scholars, major scholars, who the affairs should be really taken to, taken back to. And sometimes, in our experience, we found that sometimes there were literally life and death situations where people needed a fatwa that life and death was involved in that situation, but because the people were ignorant in the West about who to return to in certain affairs such as critical as this life and death situation, that they went to scholars who have knowledge but weren't on that level who made fatwa, which went against the hayat to kibar ulama and caused the death of an individual. And this is a real story and I'm not going to go into details, but it's true. In Wallahum Nista'an. This comes the taqlid. And reasons for taqlid, some of the reasons for this blind following without any question, is first and foremost, a sabab a raisi is jahil, is ignorance. When you don't have the tools to go back to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Madhab of the Salaf, you don't you are at the whims of the people. Whatever they translate for you, if you're not an Arabic speaker, and if you are an Arabic speaker, you're at the whims of whoever you're blind following. Maybe you have no access to the scholars. And whatever the case may be, the biggest reason is ignorance of just usul of Islam and the principles of Islam and to understand some of the principles which go against this taqlid for example, the qa'ida uh, with the salaf, which is a asl salafi, min usul ahl sunnah, is that la yuraf al haq bi rijal, walakin yuraf al rijal bil haq. We don't know the truth by men, you know, so we don't say sheikh so and so said it, that's the truth. No. We have the, the sheikh's goal and statement needs to be in accordance with the truth. And perhaps it's an issue of ijtihad. 
That could be another whole another situation. The point is, is by knowledge, you can begin to put yourself in a better position to be free from just making taqlid of this one and this one and this one and this one, going to the right and to the left with total confusion in your religion. Or pure comfort because you've made taqlid on everything, even in Aqidah, and you don't even know the evidences for what you believe. So this is a very dangerous trait, and this is a trait that Ahl sunnah has always warned against. From the time of the Sahaba, and that Ahl sunnah yudhim, or they blame the people of Bid'ah for this trait, but then unfortunately in contemporary times and throughout history, certain individuals, even from Ahl sunnah mistakenly fell into the same trap of taqlid and buying following and making ta'zim and exalting personalities. This is very dangerous to be, beware of following personalities. And some of the examples we see in contemporary times, for example, especially in the West, because we're from the West, so we can talk about those issues a little bit better. We see things like there's so many forums and groups out there, WhatsApp groups and this and that and the other. And sometimes you will see to such an extreme that scholars are attacked and belittled. People who have great knowledge and sometimes little students of knowledge that have studied under those scholars are raised up. So-and-so said, Sheikh so-and-so and Sheikh so-and-so and Sheikh so-and-so are off the minhaj. And they should not be uh, posted about and we should delete all their posts and this and that and the other. And all, and it just goes on and on. And people make a hajr, cut off one another, boycott one another, don't give salams to one another. Uh, divorces happen because of this fitna. And that is because of ignorance and taqlid and blind following individuals and exalting individuals above their status. Very Be very cautious of that. The second thing I want to talk about Habitifillah that's been done in the name of Salafia. And we say it's been done in the name of Salafia, but it's not from Salafia. Okay? I'm going to give you this kaida before we get into these other things I want to mention. And I've mentioned this many times that the, the fuqaha, they mention this with regards to, for example, water. If I say to you this jug of water, if I say this is uh, oil, and I want you to fill your car up with this, you know your car's not going to run in this. It's going to damage your engine. Okay? Or if I say it's gold because I could use the money, this is a, this weighs a lot, a lot amount, you know, quite a bit. Uh, I could, you know, it's worth something if it, if this was solid gold. I'd like to cash that in, but I can't. I, I think if I go to the counter and I say this is this is gold, I, I want my weight in, uh, you know, I want a dollar amount for this amount of gold. They're gonna look at me like I'm basically insane. Now, that qaida, that principle. Uh, that I'm referring to is that the reality of something is in its substance, not in its name. So although I call this gold to most of humanity, if not all, they refer to this in whatever language they speak uh, as water. You know, and in Arabic it's ma or moya. Uh, you know, and there's many, many different names depending upon your language. Now, I mention that to say that the reality of something is in its substance, not in its name. To say that many people have made principles and foundation and usul in the name of Salafia, which is not from Salafia. And many people claim they're Salafi and they are not Salafi. They may be takfiri, they may be takfiri jihadi, they may be, uh, you know, even have some tasawwuf. We don't know. All, all kind of different bid'ah, you know, people who are affected by the minhaj of akhwan muslimin and other, you know, issues which have caused people to deviate from that path or they were not from that, uh, from ahl sunnah aslan in their, their usul, in their foundation. And so even though they claim that, as many of the ashadis, and extreme Ashadi Sufis claim, and Diobandis, and, and Maturidiya, who claim, yeah, we're from Ahlul Sunnah Tibul Jama'ah. We are Ahlul Sunnah. Salafis are disbelievers. Salafis are Mubtadi'ah, whatever, all these kind of things. 
it really doesn't matter. They can say whatever they want, but the substance is what we're concerned about. The substance is Salafiyah, is coming from the usul of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi and the methodology of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, and As-Sarihin after them. But the second thing I wanted to mention is that where we've seen Mukhalifa, people going um, in the name of Salafiyah, Mistakes made in the name of Salafia is despicable manners. We've seen many individuals, and you see it around the world, uh, they don't know how to give da'wah, they don't have knowledge, and they just are despicable in their conduct. But yet they supposedly have the correct aqidah, and they supposedly have the correct minhaj. And this could be the case. It could be the case. He could be from Ahl Sunnah with despicable manners. She could be from Ahl Sunnah with despicable manners. But this is a, a this is an effect of her weak, or his weak iman, weak faith, and nuks fidin and um, shortcomings in their religion. It's sinful. Despicable manners is, is sinful, because what what's wajib upon us is to have good manners. That's an obligation. That's Islam. The Prophet ﷺ said, The Prophet ﷺ said, There isn't a thing which weighs heavier on the scale of a believer than good manners, and verily Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. Right. And I, I believe that's a hadith in, in Tirmidhi. The, so we've seen all kind of atrocious conduct, and I'll give you an example. Uh, one example I know a brother who newly embraced the Dawah Ahl Sunni he used to be a Takfiri and when I first met him he was a Sufi and Alhamdulillah Allah favored him and guided him away from that to the methodology of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah and he was new and he traveled to a particular place in America and two individuals greeted him and literally within the first you know within that time period they asked him about an individual in the Arab world who he has no idea about. What's your position of Abu, uh, Abu Hassan Marabi? What's your position on Abu Hassan Marabi? What do you say about him? You know, we need to know, are you with, you know, Sheikh Rabi who's refuted him, or are you with Abu Hassan? What's your position? He said, you know, I don't know. And he said, Ma salama. Like that. That's despicable, atrocious manners. And that is, there's no doubt in that. That goes against Yanafi, uh, the Dawa to Ahl Sunnah. It goes against the Dawa to Ahl Sunnah. It, 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 it's not from it because they have now not just forced this individual to take their position and made empty hand. The individual doesn't know Aslan. He's new to the Dawa. He doesn't even need to be involved in those issues. He just needs to learn more about his Islam and learn about the usul of Ahl Sunnah. Give him the tools. Give him the tools. But they didn't but the chance wasn't even given to him. He related this to me many years ago. So atrocious manners, and we can we can think of countless examples, you know, brothers, you know, just uh, I, one example was related to me, and this was a young brother. He came out of Damaj in Yemen. Only spent like a year there, okay? So he, you know, whatever he gained, he probably improved some Arabic, whatever. Learned a few little things. Okay, great. Goes back to the UK. And the brother said that this youngster, they were driving in a car, maybe in London or somewhere, and he screams out the window. He sees some uh, some guys from Javad to Tablik. Mubtadia out the window. That's despicable, horrendous manners and foolishness. Are they going to accept your dawa from that? No. Did you gain any Islamic benefit from that? Nope. Was that an illustration? People were watching you. Did they? That's going to bring them closer to the dower, and there was some good out of that. Pretty much no. That's a turnoff, and that's not the call. I don't know any of the scholars who follow that. In fact, I can say honestly, in my experience in Yemen and in Saudi, you find the scholars of Ahl Sunnah they go to Masajid. All over the place. Not all those masajid are pure Salafi masajid. No. Yemen is pretty strong, but even with that, the 
scholars there, they go to and visit and, and people people come to the da'wah. The general people, they come to the da'wah, to Ahlul Sunnah. It's very strong. It was very strong and still is still very strong in Yemen. You know, you see that da'wah. That's what da'wah is. You want to be able to call the people with uh, husn al khulq, with good manners. And mu'ad, you know, good preaching, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So that's from the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah. So in the name of ah, uh, Dawah to Ahl Sunnah, you cannot have wicked and atrocious manners. The third point I want to mention is the issue of Hajjah. And these, this is a, a major Messiah and a lot of details with regards to it. But in short, in short, you know, we're not going to obviously go into all the details. There's many books written about this, and even the scholars. There's probably some, uh, especially the Qiq Masail within the Hajr, and and as far as the Maqsid or the the intent of Hajr, you know, you'll find some of the scholars of Ahl Sunnah, especially in contemporary times, having some disputes about these issues. But in general, the the Hajr, we, we do know because this is a Qaeda in general, in uh, Islam, a general principle. Is that things is we're looking at the maslaha and the mafsada, the harms and the benefits. And that if you're making hajr of someone, there should be some benefit. It should either be to protect yourself in the religion, and that's a benefit. It should either be to uh, invite that person back to good, away from their mistakes, away from their bid'ah, away from their sinfulness. There, or to protect from their evil. Or to set an example for other people to know and understand the uh, the individual uh, and their the mukhalifat and so forth. But in basically, it should be for maslaha that individual or maslaha of the person making hajjah. That's in general, okay. So there needs to be benefit. But what has been understood by many of the youth, and unfortunately propagated by some of the duat and even some of the hadadi and some of the more extreme individuals even amongst that had some scholarship or what have you is that you know Hajar was just mashroor to just make tatbik in every situation they had no concept of the really the asul and the, the maqasid the, the 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 foundation and the the intent of Hajar. instead is a lot of times people use it to just talk, deal with their enemies and deal with the people who oppose them and people who differ with them and this is also something shared in common with the Khawarij only in the issue of takfir. Because of many of the original Khawarij, if they disagreed in a mas'ala, even between them, they would make takfir ba'bhum uh, min ba'b. You know, they would make takfir of each other. This is how many of the Khawarij sects, they even split. And they form new jama'at behind a new leader, a new takfiri leader, a new Khawarij leader. And they would make takfir of one another. And it's the same thing that we see today. That, you know, basically if you don't make hajr to, you don't make hijra or, you know, leave from wherever you are to their abode, their place, then they make takfir of you and your blood is lawful to them. This is their concept. Uh, and so it's a dangerous concept and it's filtered its way into... Uh, and manifested itself with people making tabdi of one another to the same extent, in the same way, to where they just make tabdi. You didn't take the sheikh's statement, we translated it for you. What's wrong with you? Mubtadiya. Cut you off. No, sister, don't marry him. He's a mubtadiya because, you know, he didn't, uh, he didn't like sheikh, uh, he didn't like student of knowledge so-and-so. He listened to a scholar, which is well-known by Ahl Sunnati, well-known to Ahl Sunnati, well jamaat but, you know, our da'i over here, who barely studied, uh, warned against him. And you, you didn't follow that. So, you no, don't marry him or divorce him or, you know, all kind of insane problems have uh, been a result as this, from this uh, people's misunderstanding and misapplication of this mas'ala. So, again, it's very important to know and understand what the Dawa is and not give those Hizbis around who claim Salafiyah to not give them the honor of saying that they're Salafi. When people ask about a pure Hizbi and that Hizbi, you know, that person who's calling to his group or sect or his leader, 
is clearly going against the usul of Ahlus Sunnah and the usul of Salafia, they need to be called out because people get the wrong perception of the Dao to Ahlus Sunnah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us be a source of good, not a source of evil.